action <laughs> hi guys welcome to my new destination i am currently in colombia i just landed yesterday it's just so crazy this is so funny being back here after more than four years it brings back so many memories. Colombia means a lot to me because it's the first country I landed to as a digital nomad. It marks my beginnings in this incredible journey of solo travel. As you may or may not know, obviously I've been traveling my whole life, but I only started traveling full time Yes, full time, which means I don't have a base over four years ago. Funnily enough, Colombia was the first country I visited as a digital nomad. And so I thought, why not do a video on solo travel and give you my top tips on how to get started if you decide to travel solo or perhaps become a digital nomad and work remotely. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, organize the logistics properly. What I always do is try to know where I'm going as soon as I land. So I usually book the first place like I've done here and I also usually check how to get from the airport to the place I'm staying. Is there Uber? If there is not, what are taxis like? Can I actually organize a pickup so I don't even have to worry about it depending on the time I'm landing? It makes life so much easier especially if you're traveling for the first time tip number two act confident and no one will question you just act confidently act like if you knew where you were going act like if you were a local even if you're completely lost i've done this so many times and the funny thing is people stop me in the streets that seem like they're from that country to ask me for directions <laughs> every time it gets me and makes me laugh so much because i'm in the exact same boat i don't know where i'm going i have no clue i just pretend i do so people don't think that they might want to rob me or i look scared or i look lost i look like a tourist obviously it depends on where you are some places are super safe because you don't know that's something you will need to do just to make sure you're okay i can tell you a story in colombia you tend to get robbed in the street if you have your phone so what i do is i usually walk 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 like i know where i'm going and then at some point i'm like am i actually going the right way pull over in a cafe, look up on my map quickly, okay, I'm going the right way, get out, or you know, I'm like in a corner where people are not around, so I look first before I take my phone out, and then keep walking. I've done that in Brazil, I've done that in so many places, because when you don't know, you don't know if it's a safe area to get your phone out, and the last thing you need is the only way you can communicate and get direction from, being stolen from you. Don't take your phone out and act like a tourist that you're looking around, lost with your map. I see so many people doing that. Avoid those things. These are big red flags, especially if people start looking for people to rob. You will be the first one on the list. You're an easy target. So you want to avoid doing that and act confident. Like, I'm a local, I know where I'm going. You might be an expat, but you could literally be living there. No one knows that. Only you know you're lost and traveling. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? So that would be my pro tip. Just try and play it cool. Have a casual outfit so you don't look so out there. Be street smart. As a general rule of thumb, I would say try not to flash your things. So you want to make sure that you don't show off you've got money, especially if you don't know where you're going. In Colombia, they've got a saying that says that papaya, which means exactly that. Don't show off your phone, don't show off an expensive bag, jewelry. Not every country will rob you but you just need to make sure that it doesn't happen to you right now i'm obviously filming in the street as you can see but i'm always aware of my surroundings when i do that kind of things so always keeping an eye out don't wear headphones check 
people around you and make sure you don't get your goods out in a place where you think you might get robbed. <laughs> Tip number three, loneliness isn't a thing. You're going to make so many friends you won't want to believe it because when you're alone you need to get out of your comfort zone and that means meeting people and being more sociable that you might usually be if you were traveling with friends. You will go out of your way more to meet strangers and connect with people that you don't know which in turn will lead to new friendships. Let me tell you, I'm very shy, but when I travel, it's crazy the amount of people I meet, even without looking for them. They just happen to talk to me, I just happen to interact with them because I need to go somewhere, or I'm lost or I need something, or we just have a casual chat because I'm just sitting at a cafe. You never know, wherever you go, be open, whether you're in a hostel, whether you're at the coffee shop, whether you're at the gym, whether you're at the beach, it doesn't matter where you are, people will be traveling like you and that alone creates something in common to talk about. It just connects easier that way. Trust me, I'm really bad at making the first move. When you travel out of necessity, you will be talking to people and that led me to meet so many incredible humans along the way. Just be yourself, smile, and things will fall into place, I promise. Keep going with the list of tips. Another one is it's not as unsafe as what you might have seen or heard. So let's be honest, sometimes when you hear the news, you hear like, oh my God, this happened in that country, or this is what's going on, and I find that the news tend to really put fear into people's minds so when they travel they wouldn't go to some places because they've heard something and usually when you get to these places you soon realize that it's not as unsafe as what you've seen on the news and it might have happened in your country so let's say there's been a protest or there's been some like dramatic event and then on the news you see all that drama but you know that this is not what it's like because you've lived it so i would say just take it with a pinch of salt obviously i'm not telling you to be carefree but when traveling myself i've realized that when i get to places that are usually deemed as unsafe the locals were very friendly they were really happy that i would have some interest in to their country and culture very welcoming actually and very nice before you stress out about something you make your own opinion obviously if you go to a place where there is war it might not be the best option right now i would not go somewhere just because of what the news have said in the past or the general opinion i'm not telling you to be carefree it's like any city really you need to know your surroundings and be careful when you walk around like not walk around by yourself at night for example or go home completely drunk when you're surrounded by people you barely know i would probably say tell someone you know where you are who you're going with send them your live location to make you feel safer so at least people you know and trust know where you're going and how make sure you've got some battery on your phone you've got data you can call and you've got some cash because in some places you may not be able to pay a taxi by card for example tip number five if you don't feel it don't do it trust your gut and say no in certain situations it's better to be safe than sorry when you travel you're more vulnerable when you're out of your comfort zone and you don't know your surroundings you need to be extra cautious because you don't know what could happen if people could take advantage of you and you trust people that may not be that trustworthy indeed so you want to make sure you take care of yourself and pay attention to whatever vibe you get and if you don't feel it trust your gut just don't go just say no don't take the risk for one night out it's not worth it you don't have to say yes to everyone you meet. You need to see how you feel when you're around them, if they feel like your vibe, if they feel like someone you would 
actually want to spend time with, if you feel like it's kind of off, there will always be another night out, there will always be other people, don't feel like you only have that option so you have to say yes and force yourself. Learn to trust your feelings, take care of yourself, it's just better to avoid putting yourself into uncomfortable situations. Remember, when you're traveling alone, you're the only one that's going to take care of yourself, so there is no point to risk it for the biscuit. Tip number six, travel light and thank me later. I'm so guilty of this. I always overpack, I have to carry so much around and I never end up using everything I've packed. For me. ¿Qué pasó? <laughs> ¿Cuántos? ¿Siete kilos? ¿Y cuánto te cobran por kilo? 60 dólares. 60? Ya hago Saca, saca 6 kilos. Yo esa bolsa la te daría completa. When you overpack and you've got big heavy suitcases, you think twice before you make a move. You get tired from moving around with your suitcase and you end up being like, is it really worth going for three days if I've got all of this to carry with me and travel with, especially if the distances are not easy and you have to bloody wheel suitcases around. So it's not a fashion show. You might only meet people for a few days. They won't remember what you were wearing. We're all traveling. We're all in the same boat. Just try and have a nice capsule wardrobe that you can mix and match and still look good if that's something you care about because I'm a girl, I get it. But wear things that are practical, comfortable, easy to wash, light or as light as you can. If you're going to cold climates, then only bring a few jumpers because that takes a lot of room. I've got some here and now I'm in Mexico. The plan was to go to Guatemala where it was meant to be cold. I didn't end up going and all of this is just sitting here I'm not using it so try and plan accordingly so you don't end up with half of your suitcase that you can't use especially if they're nice pieces of clothing because you won't want to give it to someone it's always good to do a good gesture and give it to charity but if those clothes are still of use to you and you don't want to get rid of them then maybe try and either have a storage space or leave it at someone's house if you can keep them safely somewhere and only travel with whatever you're actually going to wear and need. What I mean by this is the essentials, okay? Not the nice to have, not the maybe. You can always buy one fancy outfit if you end up going to that fancy party. Just save your back and yourself from caring too much. Tip number seven, Google and Facebook and WhatsApp groups are your best friends. Honestly, this is all I need. When I'm stuck and I don't know something, I just look for it online. I love working from coffee shops, for example. So what I do when I get to a new place is type coffee shops near me, best coffee shops in town, those kind of things, and then start looking at the reviews, start looking at photos that people have left, comments, and start doing a bit of research. Same goes to Facebook and WhatsApp groups. Most of the time I'd look for groups and look for the chats, what they're talking about, then join that and start getting the information and ask people from those groups how to define XYZ if I need any information on something I don't know. So if you've got internet, to be honest, you're pretty sweet and sorted. There's Everything online, everything you can potentially look for is there. So just use that resource and make the most out of it. And last but not least, the most important tip, tip number eight, be friendly with the locals and they will love you back. This cannot be further from the truth. Don't just stay with the expats. Mingle, become friends with the locals. It makes such a difference in terms of how you adapt, how you discover the culture of the country you're in, how you experience the place as well, because the locals know best. 
and expats are great and they might have been here for a while but sometimes they just stay between expats so you don't expand as much as if you were hanging out with locals this has made such a difference in my travels it opens yourself to new ways of living of doing things of appreciating the place you're in i can assure you that people are so lovely and they will be so pleased to show you around and be proud that you're interested in discovering their city their culture their food whatever it might be plus it's great because you will get to know all the best spots in town so can't go wrong with that and that's it guys this is going to be the end of this vlog if you liked it please give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel if you haven't done so yet please subscribe because I upload videos every single week in the meantime be well travel safely and I will see you guys in the next one bye Bye.